Hey, it's Maximo and welcome to Maximo's Travels. Well, folks, my bags are packed and I'm away to Japan. This is the first in my new Japan series. In this video, I'll be reviewing my flight between Melbourne to Cairns and the new Virgin Australia route between Cairns and Haneda Airport in Tokyo. <music> This video will primarily be a review of the Melbourne to Cairns Virgin Australia flight in economy and the new route between Cairns and Haneda Airport in economy X class. We got to the airport nice and early. There wasn't much of a queue and checked in. Our bags were checked in all the way to Tokyo and we didn't go through customs or immigration that was to occur in Cairns Airport. We then made our way to the Virgin Lounge. It was around about 5.30 a.m. and the lounge was pretty quiet. My American Express card enabled me to have complimentary access to the Virgin Australia lounge at Telemarine Airport in Melbourne, which is just as well because I'd lost all status points. Uh, in my preceding year because of lack of uh, flying. We booked our flights at least six months before the actual time of uh, travelling and at the time the tickets uh, from everywhere between Melbourne and Tokyo were very, very expensive. We opted to use all our Virgin Australia frequent flyer points and paid $750 each for a return trip from Melbourne to Tokyo by far the cheapest flight that we could find but it probably wasn't the best timing it was a very very early morning start and I guess it made the whole day a little bit tiring and somewhat uh, unpleasant we could have gone for a later start and flown direct from Melbourne to Narita in Tokyo with uh, Qantas but uh, that airfare for the two of us was around about uh, $3,000 so twice the price that we paid excluding uh, any points contribution. It was pretty early so the options for food available at the lounge were somewhat meagre. We both had coffees and I had uh, some fruit and a couple of small jars of yogurt and uh, Joe had some, uh, some cereal and a couple of other things. Time passed quickly and not before too long. It was time to head to the boarding gate and catch our 640 flight to Cairns. As you can see, it was still uh, quite dark outside and still very early. We boarded our plane, a 737-800, and proceeded to our seats in economy class. The seat width was um, almost adequate. There certainly wasn't very much uh, elbow room uh, and there was sufficient uh, leg room for the economy seat. So overall, it was reasonably comfortable if a little bit sort of squeezy in the width department. Neither Joe or I bothered with uh, connecting our tablet to the Wi-Fi network and there was nowhere to uh, hang your tablet on the back of the seat it'd have to be on the the tray in front of you complimentary tea and coffee were served on the flight and the coffee was instant and awful you had the choice of selecting uh, items from the menu at a cost but we chose not to buy anything and soon it was time to land at Cairns airport we had just over a three hour stopover in Cairns Airport and whilst our checked in luggage was checked in all the way to Japan, we did have to carry our carry on luggage from the international terminal to the domestic terminal through mostly covered walkways, a distance of around about 800 metres in glorious sunshine on a beautiful Cairns morning. It's actually good to stretch the legs. It was quite interesting because we couldn't check in at all online prior to departure. And once we got to Telemarine Airport, we were able to and were directed to use the electronic uh, check-in system. And our bags were consequently checked in all the way from Melbourne to Cairns and all the way to uh, Japan. We didn't actually need to 
um, check in at all at Cairns International Terminal. We were issued boarding passes for both legs. There was only one lounge at the International Airport, the Reef Lounge, and it was closed on the day that we flew. And from what I understand, I don't think it's open very often at all. So if you are flying Virgin Australia, regardless of the class, don't expect the lounge access at Cairns International Airport. There are a couple of cafes uh, in the departure area and although the gluten-free food options were limited, I think the coffee was quite good. I did have a, an apple cake and a gluten-free apple cake and it was quite nice and Joe had a lot more options to choose from. Time went fairly slowly in this lounge over our three-hour stopover. The international departures area only had eight gates fair bit of space but a quite a small duty-free area with a very limited and expensive supply of alcohol. So I made a note to myself not to buy duty-free on my way back uh, to Melbourne. I wandered around the terminal for a little bit more and uh, slowly ebbed away the time until it was time to head to the departure gate which wasn't very far and get ready for our boarding. It was time to board the plane and we made our way to our allotted seats 13E and 13F in Economy X. This is a brand new plane, it was only a couple of months old and it was a 737 MAX plane in a 3 and 3 configuration in Economy and Economy X. The first issue we encountered was that because these seats were right over the wing and right adjacent to the uh, emergency exit door the seats didn't recline at all. So imagine that folks, it's a seven hour, 45 minute flight with non-reclining seats. Pretty much a rookie mistake and we should have done some research uh, to make sure that we don't book these seats again. So a warning to you guys. The plane was uh, quite new, it looked new, it had a new uh, smell to it. Um, very good seats, uh, good storage for tablets, there was a charging point, plenty of storage in the seat in front, oodles and oodles of leg room and if there's one thing I could say is there didn't appear to be as much elbow room um, as the 737-800 flight that we'd taken from Melbourne to Cairns but so much, uh, so much foot room it wasn't funny. Also the seat appeared to be a bit short so your thigh is sort of stuck over the edge of the seat and after about uh, four or five hours it wasn't all that comfortable. One of the things we immediately noticed was that this plane was noticeably quieter than the other 737 that we'd just been on so that was a uh, positive. So we took off, then I had a look at the food menu and that is when issue number two arose for me. So we took off, made ourselves comfortable and I had a look at the food menu and that's when issue number two arose for me. I know that uh, we had to uh, order and pay for food separately. Uh, I knew that when we booked the ticket but what I should have done is studied the menu much closer because I had very very limited food options basically some instant noodles uh, nuts and uh, a cookie that's all I could order for the duration of the flight pretty unacceptable um, there's no way to pre-order uh, a gluten-free meal um, Joe was fortunate that there were a number of vegetarian options that she could uh, avail herself uh, of. And the guy sitting next to us did the right thing. He brought his own meal, so he must have been in the know, although he wasn't in the know to know not to book seats in row 13 that didn't recline, I guess. So we bit the bullet. I ordered a beer and uh, the gluten-free noodle concoction, while Joe had a creamy vegetable pie. By all accounts, Joe said the pie was quite nice and the total for the three items was 36 Australian dollars. Quite pricey, but uh, what can you do when you're a number of kilometres in the air and miles from anywhere? Not really very appetising noodles. 
You can see there that there was a, a fairly good position for the tablet uh, in the back of the seat. The entertainment system was as good a quality as your tablet. Now, unfortunately on this flight, uh, it was announced fairly early on that both the Wi-Fi and the entertainment system weren't working at all for the entirety of the flight. So that is seven hours 45 of no entertainment. I was fortunate that I had a couple of movies and some leftover TV series that I was able to watch. But if you didn't have anything, you would be awfully, awfully bored. A couple of hours passed and I decided to get myself a gluten-free macadamia cookie and some coffee. Tea and coffee were complimentary, but the coffee was instant and awful. We also ordered a, uh, a packet of Pringles and that cookie. Now the cost of the cookie and the Pringles was 10 Australian dollars. Quite a high price uh, when, and um, for me quite limited the number of options I could choose from. And then that brings me to the next issue was that there were only th uh, two toilets for the whole of Economy and Economy X passengers. That generally meant uh, a reasonably long wait time just to use the toilet at virtually any part of the uh, any part of the flight. Two toilets for a plane load of passengers, yeah, not uh, not sufficient in my view. As I look back on this flight, my motivation for booking it was one, it was a new route, uh, and secondly, it was the cheapest possible combination of physical dollars and actually all my uh, frequent flyer points. It was interesting to check out the flight. Uh, I think in hindsight, it was a very early start to the day. I probably uh, would prefer to perhaps book the Qantas direct flight from Melbourne to Narita Airport without any layovers or stopovers. And the other airlines were as expensive as this Virgin flight and all involved at least one uh, and sometimes two stops and layovers in other airports. I do believe the small premium for economy X over economy is well worth it. Um, and in terms of the flight, well, you know, you had to buy your own food, not much width in the seats, uh, a number of issues with the entertainment system, uh, the limited food selection. Um, I'd probably fly with another airline if I was to do this uh, particular route again. But that's just me. I do hope you've liked this video. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Until next time, bye.